So in this video, we're going to be thinking about the evolution of cells. So what are cells and more importantly, where did they come from? So if we're going to think about any evolutionary problem, then we first of all need a, some sort of evolutionary for, or phylogenetic tree. So the tree of life looks like this. So we start with uh, a common ancestor um, and then there are three main groups in the tree of life. So uh, we have our first group, which then branched and diversified, uh, which were the bacteria. So things like E. coli uh, are our first group of cellular organisms and their cells are relatively small cells. I'm just drawing a rod shaped one. They can be spherical. Um, inside they have some DNA. So they have a DNA genome um, and importantly they have some ribosomes. Um, so they have a relatively simple sort of a cell shape. Then we have two other domains which are more closely related to each other than they are to the bacteria. So the tree in fact forks like this. So then we've got another sort of great domain or kingdom of life uh, which you may or may not have heard of uh, before um, which are the archaea. Um, so they might include uh, methane producing bacteria that you find in cow stomachs um, um, or uh, they might be, uh, they were originally discovered as some of the organisms that live on the hydrothermal vents in the bottom of the sea. So those are the archaea and then, then we've got our last major branch uh, over here uh, and these guys are the eukaryotes. Uh, so that's the plants, the animals, the fungi are over there. And we know that eukaryotes have a much more complicated cell structure. So they're larger cells in general. We know uh, they've got a nucleus which contains the DNA genome. Uh, they've got internal organelles, so they ha might have the mitochondria, uh, you might have the Golgi apparatus, and you've got ribosomes in there. Remember, ribosomes are the structures that are responsible for protein synthesis. I realise I forgot to tell you about the cell structure of the archaea. They're also relatively small cells. They've again got a DNA genome um, and they've got ribosomes. So superficially, they look a bit more like the bacteria, but if you get down into the genetics of them, they're more closely related to the eukaryotes, and it's the bacteria that are kind of off on their own as a side group. So you'll notice that this um, means that one of the terms you've probably heard across before is a bit of a funny one. So both the bacteria and the archaea belong to the prokaryotes, Um, that's not an evolutionarily useful term because the archaea and the bacteria are actually not that closely related. Uh, these two groups are the ones that are more closely related. But because their cells look relatively similar and they haven't got a nucleus, they're referred to as the prokaryotes. So that's not an evolutionarily useful term. A couple of other things. So um, all modern cells fit on this evolutionary tree. So all modern cells are related to each other ultimately. Um, so this organism here, this is what we call LUCA, which is the last universal common ancestor. So at some point deep in evolutionary time, there was one cell that gave rise to all of the modern cells that we see. We know that they're all related and we know that they're all related because we're able to construct these trees uh, based on, us, on all organisms sharing the same sequence. So all uh, evolutionary trees need some sort of genetic sequence uh, in order to construct them. And for this universal tree of life, the sequence is based on ribosomal RNA. 
So all of these organisms have ribosomes and those ribosomes are all related to each other. Um, so it's a particular sequence. So the ribosome is made up of uh, RNA and protein. It's a particular sequence of RNA uh, that we use to construct the tree, uh, which is known as the 16S um, uh, RNA in the bacteria and the archaea. And it's known as the 18S in the eukaryotes. The eukaryotes have a slightly different sequence, but we can still track that back and see that there is a common ancestor between those two sequences. So this universal tree of life is constructed using sequences from the ribosome. And that's allowed us to create this universal tree of life. So that's all fine. Uh, and that gives us our different domains. But what this tree doesn't explain very well is the evolution of organelles and particularly the organelles of the mitochondria and the chloroplast. So for that there was an extraordinary evolutionary event that occurred um, which is known as endosymbiosis. Um, and there have been two great endosymbiotic events in evolutionary history. So the way that endosymbiosis works um, is this, and we'll think about this with relation to the mitochondria first. So what happened with the mitochondria is one day there was a bacterial cell swimming around nice and happily. It's got DNA and ribosomes uh, inside, its, uh, inside its cell. And then one day it gets engulfed by another cell, which also has DNA in its cytoplasm and it also has ribosomes. And we think that cell was probably, uh, was an archaea. And when that happened, rather than what would usually happen is just the bacteria got eaten, what happened in this case is that um, the bacterium survived and started living inside the cell of the archaea. So we've still got its own DNA, it's still got its own genome, it's still got its own ribosomes. This outside cell still has its own uh, DNA and its own ribosomes. And we create a stable symbiosis. So this uh, bacterium lives inside the cell per more permanently. Then over evolutionary time, what we get um, is the modern eukaryotic cell. So there's the eukaryotic cell. At some point it develops a nucleus, but we're not actually very sure how that happened. Um, but what we end up with in the side of the eukaryotic cell are mitochondria, which we know, if we sequence the genome of a mitochondria, it looks more like a bacterium than anything else. So uh, these are our mitochondria. And they um, are effectively, those are bacteria that got permanently trapped inside a larger cell that became the modern eukaryotic cell. Um, and then what's happened over evolutionary time is that genes have migrated from the mitochondrion to the nucleus. So if we look in the nuclear genome, so if you look in your own nuclear genome, in your chromosomes, you will find genes that used to be in the, mito uh, in the bacterium that became the mitochondrion. So around about 90% of the genes that used to be in the mitochondria are now in the nucleus and those proteins have to be re-imported into the mitochondria. So that's where the mitochondria came from. So what about the chloroplasts? Well, it's a very similar story, in fact. It's another story of endosymbiosis. But obviously we know that not all cells have chloroplasts, so this only happens in a subset of cells. So what we had here 
is one day again swimming along doing its own thing is um, another bacterium uh, which was photosynthetic And it, again, one day was engulfed by another cell, which we know had to have been a eukaryotic cell in this case, um, which already had a nucleus and, crucially, already had mitochondria. So it's a eukaryotic cell, as we'd understand it now. Again, we had that symbiosis step that gave rise to this complex eukaryotic cell. We've got its own nucleus, so it's got its DNA genome, and then it's got a bunch of organelles. So it's got mitochondria from that first endosymbiosis, and then it's got chloroplasts from that second endosymbiosis, Again, they have their own genome. They have their own ribosomes, um, but they are now classed as organelles rather than symbionts. So they also have their own DNA genome. And again, with the chloroplast, as we had with the mitochondria, we've also had gene transfer to the nucleus. So again, in the modern nucleus of a plant genome, uh, there are genes that are actually came from the chloroplasts, and again, there are proteins that are made from the nuclear genome that get re-imported into the chloroplast. So you'll notice that as a result of this, we have double membrane organelles. So both the mitochondria and the chloroplasts have two membranes around them. One membrane came from the original cell and the other membrane came from the bacterium that was uh, engulfed in endosymbiosis. So in summary, all the cells share a modern common ancestor, which we call LUCA. Uh, we've constructed the tree of life from ribosomal RNA sequences. Uh, and we've got the bacteria, the archaea and the eukaryotes. Endosymbiosis of a bacterium gave rise to the eukaryotes and endosymbiosis of a photosynthetic bacterium gave rise to the chloroplast. So we think this event that gave the mitochondria is in fact the event that gave rise to the eukaryotes. Before this event, we just had archaea and bacteria. But once this event had taken place and we got this stable symbiosis, we think that's what actually gave rise to the eukaryotic cells. The evolution of the nucleus is a bit more of a mystery. We don't really know so much about that, but certainly these endosymbiotic events were some of the most important events in evolutionary history.